Welcome back. This is Dr. Bob Stark, and today we're uh, talking about the iterable collection and iterator interfaces. Last class, we looked at the collections class, and it's appropriate to, to point out that, that, that the name of that class is uh, plural, so as we don't uh, confuse it with the collection, singular, interface that we're going to be talking about today. The collections class is a collection of static methods that operate on collections, things like minimum and maximum, reversing it, shuffling it, those are all uh, good, good things we can do and useful things we can do. Uh, we also look at the comparable and comparator interfaces. Comparable, which defines the natural and default ordering for uh, a class. And then comparator, which allows us to define additional orderings for the class. And as I said before, today we're going to look at the collection interface, again, singular to, di to distinguish it from collections class, um, and then the iterable and iterator interfaces. So a little review, we, we talk a lot in CS1 about data and wrapper classes. So a data class is uh, one that just has fields, constructors, and methods uh, for accessing those fields. So our student class that we've been using a lot is uh, a good example of this. Uh, a wrapper class is um, one that is a class that we wrap around an existing data type. Uh, integer, capital I, integer, capital D double, capital B boolean, all of these are classes that wrap around the corresponding primitive data type. And pardon me a second, I'm going to let my cat out of the room. Hold on there, buddy. Sorry about that. He was getting bored with the presentation already. Um, we, in CS1 as well, we, we created several of these wrapper classes around collection types, usually around the array list type. Um, and uh, we're going to kind of expand on that idea today when we look at uh, these collection wrapper classes. So in this one, we have a class that uh, has a field that is a collection. So in our CS1 examples, our wrapper class had a data member that was of type array list. And then the class that does the wrapping provides its own methods to interact with that, that field. Usually methods for things like add and remove and you know, we, we would look for specific items inside the collection and that sort of thing. Um, they allowed us to define a very restricted set of, of methods uh, to operate on that, that collection. All right, so let's, let's look at uh, our project for today in the, um, the Eclipse project that's provided alongside this uh, at the roster class. It should have an array list of students inside it, as well as wrapper methods for add size, and also a get students to uh, get us access to that. So let's take a look. Here's the roster class. Has a data member that is an array list of student objects initialized to, to empty in, in our constructor. Um, we also have, we'll, we'll have a, a, another constructor here that takes in a, a collection of students. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Have a getter for the array list itself. Have an add method for the array list. And a size method. Um, and most of these, and of course, add and size are fairly simple. They mostly delegate the work of add and, of course, size to the underlying array list. And we've seen this before. We, we did a lot of these in, in Computer Science 1. So why did we do it? Why wrap a collection? Um, I kind of alluded to this in an earlier slide. Um, this idea of information hiding, um, we, we have a list, or an array list in this case, and we want to hide the fact that it's actually a list. We don't, we don't want people outside our class to know that we're operating on a list. Um, part of that is that the, um, the array list has a lot of different methods and things that we, that we can use to operate on it, and we don't want to allow um, the users of our roster class, for example, to have access to all of them. Some of them don't simply make sense. Uh, with, a, with a roster. So we're going we're gonna to hide that away from them. Um, so we, using this abstraction, we reduce external complexity. There's less things 
less ways for other classes to interact with our roster class. And believe it or not, that's a good thing. Um, we want to be as restrictive as we can uh, because in doing so, we, we eliminate errors and uh, potential for uh, abusing our object. Um, it decouples the external code, meaning the external um, set of, of, of public methods that our roster class provides from how we've actually implemented it internally, which is an array list. It also allows changes to be made to the class, uh, in this case our roster, without having to, to, in, to change how people who are calling those rosters methods um, call their methods. So um, the method signatures don't change, only the internal details of how our roster is implemented would change. So uh, we're going to look at, look at the roster class here. Uh, we have our um, collection type right now as an array list. We could change it to another one, like a vector or a linked list, and um, anybody using our roster class will never be the wiser. Um, all they see are the, the public methods of roster. They don't see the particulars of vector or linked list and those sorts of things. Um, so we could do that right away with, um, let's say, a linked list. that and we have to change the change how it's defined in the constructors which is fine because right now we're only dealing with the internal implementation of roster nothing outside of roster is going to have to change so far um, so add, both add and size work fine, even if, if, and even if they didn't, we could change the implementation. And again, as long as the method signature doesn't change, anybody calling rosters methods would not have a problem. Where we do run into a problem is here. Um, our get students um, is, is specifically re returning an array list of students, and that's not allowed because we don't have an array list internally. Um, we could make this a linked list since that's our data type but that might that might cause problems with callers who are expecting an array list um, one way we can we can sometimes get around this is we can change uh, the signature of this to the interface type list and hope that our callers are using list as their their expected data type here. If they expected array list though, we would have to go back and change um, any, any callers to this. So another possibility we could do is we could turn roster into a collection class and have it implement the collection interface. So our goals here is that the, the collection class should offer commonly used operations such as traversing the elements in, in, in an iteration, um, such as adding and removing and those kinds of things. Um, and it should be easy to use by offering these very well-defined standard operations. So let's start by looking at um, how Java implements the, its collections framework. And we'll see, see some familiar players here. Um, at the very top of it, is this interface iterable. Everything in the collections framework is iterable, meaning you can iterate over it. Inheriting from an iterable is the collection class, which provides things like add and remove and, and, and so forth. And then we break out in, into some different kinds of collections. List, which we, we should already be familiar with, queue, set, which we might look at. We're definitely going to look at the set stuff later, I think. Um, under list, like which again is still an interface and it inherits from collection, we have concrete implementations in array list, which we've seen before, linked list, which you just saw, and vector. Um, and then a vector also has a child class called stack, which um, is a little more specialized in how it works. And there's, there's obviously um, concrete implementations of, of the queues and sets and, and so forth. We're mostly going to be interested with um, iterable and collection today. Um, so go look at look at the um, the tutorial on the on the Java collections framework. Uh, you get a little more uh, insight into how that works. 
So we're going to have um, our roster class implement uh, the collection interface. And first of all, we have to realize that collection is a generic class, uh, meaning we have to feed it the type of things it, it holds. Just like array list, we have to feed it the type of thing it holds. Um, this is where it, it, it comes from, the, the generic and collection. So we could um, have get students return uh, a collection of student. So let's do that. We'll make it even more um, generally useful here. And notice it works because this.students, whether it's a linked list, whether it's an array list, those inherit from collection of students. And so we can, we can pass those out just as if they are a collection of students, because they are a collection of students. So now anything we, we change inside of the roster class, we can change linked list to, to array list, array list to linked list, or vector, any of those types. Or even we can move into sets and, and queues and those other kinds of, of collection objects. We could use those as the underlying type in our roster class. So there are some uh, methods in the collections class where a collection of things won't work as the parameter. So um, for example, we could um, do uh, collections.min on a collection, we could do coll uh, but we couldn't do collections.sort on a uh, collection type. And the reason is because a collection at a high level, high abstract level, has no notion of, of order. Uh, it's not a, an ordered uh, collection. We have to get into a list to be an ordered collection. So collections.sort requires something uh, of a little more specific type, in this case a list. So we, uh, we could do what I did before. We could have get students return a list, or we could cast it to a list after we've got the return type. Um, usually that's a bad idea. You know, we talked before about casting, and we want to avoid that as much as possible. Uh, because we could have uh, this class cast exception at runtime that we deal with. Um, so we have a choice. We can either return it as a list or we can return it as a collection. What, whatever you ultimately decide there is going to be based on you know, your needs. If your, your program needs it to be an ordered uh, collection, then you must return it as a list. If not, you can do it as the higher level uh, collection type. All right, so let's make our roster list-based. Um, so I'm going to change the um, type of the instance variable to list of students. And with that, we can still make it an array list implementation. And now we can have our have this our get students return a list of students. And by doing so, we get the advantage of anything that a list has, including the ability to sort. Even though the underlying type is an array list, we're going to be callers are going to receive it as if it is a list object and they can treat it as such. Now if a, a, another object wants to use a roster and iterate through the items inside the roster, right now they have to call get students and iterate over that. So we'll have a for each loop that looks kind of like this. For each student in my roster.get students, which will return my list, then I can do something. Um, that's, that's all right, but there, there are better ways out there. One thing we can do is make the wrapper itself iterable by implementing the iterable interface. And as we saw before, that is the root interface of all the Java collection classes. Um, anything that implements iterable can be used within a for each loop 
as, as the, the collection in the for each loop. It requires three methods. Uh, the first one is the iterator method itself. Um, and the interface also has default implementations of for each and split iterator. Um, we can override those if we want. I don't think we're going to need to uh, for our purposes today. So all we really have to override is iterator itself. So we're going to do this with our, our roster class. And um, we can kind of cheat on this one a bit because the underlying object in our roster is a list. And list already defines iterator. So all we really need to do is delegate our, our iterator method to the list's internal iterator method by simply returning it, as we see here. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to have roster implement iterable. Oops. There we go. It's going to force me to add the unimplemented methods, but I'm just going to do that by pasting in. There we go. And I need to import my iterator, which make that go away, and all my errors are resolved. So again, kind of cheating on it here, but uh, our iterator for roster is really going to delegate to the iterator for uh, the underlying list. And that's fine in this case, because it's, it's, a, it's a wrapper uh, type class. All right, so we can go into our display roster method um, and now remove the call to get students um, from roster in the um, in the for each loop and simply replace it with roster. So let's do that. I believe that's in the demo controller. There we go. Right. So right now our roster object students, we're calling its get students method to access the internal list. No longer is that necessary. Students itself is iterable, iterable so we can um, pass it in. Something is doesn't like something I just did. I think the um, let's build our project here. Okay. All right. I'll make sure. Oh, I forgot to do this. So roster has to implement iterable with students in, in, in generics. I apologize, I missed that. That should, yeah, that fixes the error in demo controller. So yes, now students is iter iterable over a, a, a collection of student objects. Let's see if we can run that. There we go. Still works. So effectively, we refactored this by, um, you know, making the roster itself iterable. Um, so now we can use things inside a for each loop. Makes our code a little cleaner. Um, we can't use iterable everywhere. Um, we want to get rid of rid of the get students method completely. Um, however, um, we can't um, do things like collections .min roster um, because it um, you know it requires a collection, not an iterable. Um, so what we can do here is instead of just implementing iterable, we can in, uh, implement collection of student. Now the naive way to do that is 
to put um, a comma here and do collection student, except collection student already contains, is, is a sub uh, interface of iterable, so we can actually eliminate it. Still makes it iterable. Uh, we're going to have a few things we have to implement here. And we'll come to that in a minute. So collection interface, a little more uh, specific than iterable, um, represents a group of objects. Um, it can pass around collections of objects um, in a very general um, way. Um, and there's several methods we, we're going to have to implement, including an add all, a clear, contains, is empty, and so forth. Um, right now, the underlying collection is an array list. So any of the uh, collection um, methods that we implement are probably just going to be delegated to the array list calls. And as I said before, we don't have to do both iterable and collection because a collection extends iterable. Now, we get into some uh, issues with collection in that there are requirements for a collection beyond just um, those that are enforced by the interface. So we need to go to the Java API and double check and make sure we're doing everything that needs to happen. Um, in particular, look at do you need to have specific kinds of constructors? Um, look at the return values and methods. Look for exceptions that need to be thrown in certain situations. Um, and uh, there may be other restrictions and conditions on the data that the, the class maintains. So you can pull up uh, the collections interface here. I think I've already got it. Oops. There. And if you read through this, you'll notice um, at the very least, you have to have two uh, standard constructors. One is a no arguments constructor. Um, that creates the empty collection, and then you have a constructor with a single argument of type collection, which is effectively what we call a copy constructor. It copies all the elements from the parameter into the, the con this con uh, collection that we're building. So we need to make sure we do that. Oops, get rid of that one. And that's what we're talking about here. So let's actually pause and do that in our, um, in our roster here. So already we have a roster that has the single argument, um, or has the zero argument constructor that's creating an empty collection. So we're good there. And uh, the person that made, made our starter project did the same for our roster uh, constructor that takes a collection. And we're, you know, with that, we're creating our new array list and doing an add all of, of the um, items in that collection. So we have to have both of those to have a true collection uh, class. All right, hold on, my cat wants back in. Those of you who have cats know how this works. Come on, buddy. Hurry. Come on, there we go. Could have left him out there, but we'd have heard meowing for the rest of this video. And it probably wouldn't have been cute. Um, so collection, like many interfaces, will specify certain kinds of preconditions um, on its uh, methods. And these might be different from things we've been used to before. Uh, so an example here uh, is the remove method of collection must throw null pointer exception if the object passed to it is null, which previously we've been doing a legal argument exception here. So we need to make sure that when we write a remove method for our collection that we have it do throw null pointer exception instead of a legal argument exception on a null. Um, and we have to do that explicitly because in our case the um, you know, array list allows null objects, and we're, we're not going to do that. Um, so we have to explicitly throw the exception. So I think we need to go ahead and put this one in. That's part of our 
overrides. And this is, it's a bad idea to copy paste um, code out of the slides, uh, even though I did it, because sometimes you get things like quotes that are incorrect. There we go. So that covers our remove for the, the collection. We, you know, we still get a compile error because there are some other things we need to, to implement. Um, another uh, uh, example of this is the remove all. Again, if it take if you get a, a null object past remove all, you're supposed to throw null pointer exception and not um, um, not throw uh, a legal argument exception. If we look at the API, oops, again wrong window. Pull this one up. And if we look at the remove all. You'll see that it also uh, throws class cast exception if the types of, of anything in the collection are incompatible with the collection we're adding them to. Um, we do have to check that that's, that's taken care of. In our particular case, it is because the array lists remove all uh, will, will do that for us. So that will throw our class cast exception in, in the case of of when it needs to be thrown. All right, so let's add this one to our implementation. And correct the quotes there. And just to make it look better, we'll do that. So far, so good. And here is that all. So let's take a look at it in the So we add all the elements in the collection to this collection. Uh, things we need to look at, um, make sure cl our, a class cast exception is thrown. Um, if there's incompatible collection elements being trying to be added, I have to do a null pointer. Um, if the, um, the one we're adding contains a null and we don't allow it. So this is different from what we've seen before. So we don't do null pointer if we're passed in a null uh, a collection object, we do null pointer if the collection contains a null and we don't allow them. Um, illegal argument exception, if something in one of the elements of the of the collection we're adding is invalid for, for what we're trying to do. Um, we can also do an illegal state if um, there, for some reason we can't add everything. Um, Maybe, maybe we, we have a, a limit on how many things we can add or a limit on how many things we can hold. So all these need to be thrown um, if, if necessary. Um, unsupported operation exception, we're going to ignore for now. We'll, we might talk about that in a minute. That's only if um, we, we're not going to support at all in our collection. Um, in this case, it is up to us if we can allow duplicates or not. Um, the version we see in the slide does not allow duplicates. Um, so it, it has to iterate over everything and look for duplicates um, and throw uh, a legal argument exception if that's the case. It doesn't have to do that. We, if, we, if we allow duplicates, it's going to be a lot easier. Um, notice uh, we have a null pointer exception if the collection is null. We also have a null pointer exception if the collection contains null, meaning we have made a decision that we're not going to allow null objects to be added. All right, so let's take this and add it, put it in our roster, and then clean it up. Looks like 
there is a bug in the slide. So it's going to be current student there. But otherwise, it's good. And let's tell the source to correct the indentation here. There we go. Just to clean things up a bit. Still have everything in there because I, I can tell I've got a compile error. So we'll keep going. All right. So for, uh, for the next little bit, I want you to pause here. Um, continue modifying the roster class um, and then unpause and I'll, I'll talk you through uh, the rest of it. Okay, hopefully this th this means you did what I just said and uh, let, let's go through there. Now, I don't know if we've shown this to you before or not, but if you have, if you're implementing any kind of interface and it shows uh, a syntax error on the class name, one thing you might be able to do is hover over it and add the unimplemented methods. Now, this doesn't implement them for you. It just gives you, it just tells you everything you need to do. So, um, it gives you, gives you stubs for all of them. So, we got to go through each and every one. So, is empty. We can delegate that to our array list. And we're good. Oops, got to return that. And let's make sh let's check our API. See if there are any. Nope, I was going to see if there are any um, exceptions we need to throw, and and we don't. All right, contains. That one, I noticed that was next. We can probably do a delegate there, but let's see, class cast exception. Will probably be and the null pointer exception. Actually, we'll need to check that one because it's a um, I don't like O as a as a variable. So if obj equals null. exception and I'm just going to ignore messages for now but you should put them in your own code and otherwise I think the class cast will, will happen if we um, do that I think that'll handle it for us all right two array these are not these are cool because um, they're uh, useful for, for converting from a list to an array uh, and, and back and forth. So uh, definitely implement those. Let's check our make sure there's any um, restrictions here. So the basic one does object um, array, and then the other version does a um, does a typed array. Let's do the simple one first because there's no other real restrictions on it. We can um, simply do a, del a delegation here. We'll Start by doing, actually, we need to change the types on this one. Make sure I haven't actually done this one before. I've never overridden one of these before. Yep, yep, yep. That was right the first time.
sure what's going on there. I may have to go back and correct myself later. Uh, but let's make sure we've got our preconditions taken care of on that one. Uh, we need to do a null pointer exception if the specified array is null. And I'm going to cheat. Copy paste that. Although, actually, I don't have to do that because we're delegating and it's going to do, do that for us. So I think we're fine there. Um, let's look at contains. There we go. Um, we'll start by delegating that one. Oh, I'm sorry, we're looking at contains all here. So let's check that contains all. And class cast, that should happen with the delegate. And the null pointer if we're not allowing nulls to be added. So let, we, let's go ahead and check that one. So if c.contains null, then we need to throw a, a null pointer exception. Looks like contains doesn't need to be uh, overridden. All right, we've got to retain all. We'll start by delegating it. And let's see if there's anything we need to. Um, check there. So class cast should be taken care of by our internal list. No pointer. Yeah, so we need to do our, our contains check on that one again. Just like this. So if this has a null in it, uh, we want to throw null pointer exception because we're not allowing them in ours. And in clear, we should be good because dot students dot clear easy delegation there and maybe just maybe let's see if there's anything yeah we're good on that one but we could do in supported operation exception but ours is going to be supported so not, we're fine there all right so if we do this our call to collections dot min and demo controller should work correctly so Demo controller probably in run. Source that out and run again. Oops, something. Oh, we still got a syntax error here. Comment that out. Okay. There we go. Our minimum still works. Now, it is asked. Well, let's see if our slides keep us through that. Um, however, a call to collections.sort roster will not compile. So let's show you that. It won't compile. And the reason is because the roster is a collection it's not a list and we can only sort things that that implement list so we're gonna go back and toggle the comments on that one all right now we're going to take a look at a, at a different class called array roster this is a roster where we've decided for whatever reason we want to internally represent the students as a as a array 
And so we've been using doing them as a list, which is pretty easy to do delegation on. Here we're going to do it as an array. And that will, will change things a bit. Um, so we already have uh, that class in here, array roster. Um, so it has an internal uh, data member called students that is an array type. It also includes a max size and a size variable. Um, it initializes those and it starts off with a, um, an array of at max size. Um, this one uh, overrides the, well, it doesn't override it. It gives us a, a constructor that will let us copy in from a collection and it um, starts by um, you know bringing anything in except it will only go up to the maximum size allowed. And then we have an add that will um, let us go up to the maximum size. Uh, we have an overridden size method and we have um, and even an uh, iterator uh, for it as well, which we'll talk about in a minute. So to implement the collection interface, we're going to have to implement the iterator method. So one thing we don't get, like we did in array list, is we don't have the ability to delegate this to an internal array list. The array is not an iterator, uh, it's not iterable itself, um, so we can't use, we can't call its iterator method like we did with the list. Um, so how do we do that, um, you know, if we're going to implement the iterator, iterable interface? Um, a quick solution would be to simply copy all the array elements into a list and then return the iterator of that. Um, has some disadvantages. We have to do the copy, which causes an inefficiency. Um, and if we do use the remove method of that iterator, the array will not actually be affected. So we're going to build our own iterator for array roster. So the iterator interface. Um, it's used to retrieve the elements of a collection one by one. Um, it's actually implemented as a separate class from the, the collection that, it's, that it iterates over. Um, it requires implementation of two methods. The has next, meaning it returns true if there's something else in the collection. Um, and then next gives us that next thing in the iteration. It also has a couple of default methods, um, including a remove that removes the last element returned by the, the iterator. So anything that is an iterator can be uh, uh, used by a, a, a for each. Um, and actually, that's what the for each is doing. It, it uses that iterator to come up with the uh, know what the next and if something ha if the has next and all uh, exists. Uh, so we've, uh, you may have seen this before and uh, may have encountered it in CS1. One of the things when we're using an iterator to iterate over elements, one thing we cannot do is remove while we're iterating over it. Um, if you do, it will cause a, um, a concurrent, what's called a concurrent modification exception. If you want to remove something uh, from a list while you're iterating over it, what you actually do is you save it and um, hold off, and after you're done iter iterating, then you can call it and call the remove method um, from a list. But don't remove or remove all while you're in you're iterating over um, a list or other correct uh, collection. All right, we're going to implement our iterator as an inner class. Now, what this actually means is we're writing a class inside another class um, and it it could be public to, and so other people other um, outside uh, objects could instantiate it uh, it could also be private I think that's what we're going to do in our case so uh, in this case the uh, the iterator is an inner class 
that really is just you know being used to to help out something with the outer class um, it belongs to the outer class um, actually belongs to an object of the outer class and it can only be created for an object of uh, the underlying collection um, all fields in the outer class are in, as well as methods are available for the inner class to use because they're in scope um, and we'll talk more about that later but uh, for now let's take a look at how this was done in array roster so here's array roster class and if we I'm gonna see if I can collapse everything down to uh, make this look a little tidier All right, so array roster has its constructors, it's adding its size, and then inside of it is another class. In this case, we're making it private, but it, you know, public ones are allowed. We're making it final, so it can't be um, inherited from again. And uh, you know, everything else it looks just like a class, except it's inside another class. So our array roster iterator implements iterator of students. It has its own data members. Um, it has its own methods because it must uh, implement has next and next, as we see. Um, we're even overriding remove in this case. Uh, all of these being done to, to deal with the, the array itself. Um, and as we said before, it can directly access the fields in the underlying co collection. I uh, think we also are we making our array roster iterable. Yeah, let's, let's see if we can. We actually we aren't actually doing anything with our inner class right now. So let's actually, let's not do it as collection right now. Let's just do it as iterable. Uh, eventually, we're going to head towards collection, but we'll have to implement a lot of other stuff there to do that. So let's just do it iterable for now and we can add the collection stuff in later if we need to. So um, our iterator in this case will probably need to return a new um, what are we calling it? An array roster iterator. which it will pick up uh, from inside there. Now notice the caller does not see a array roster iterator. The caller just sees an iterator. But when we do this, now our array roster can be used within a, a for each loop. So that's all we have for today. Um, again, if you have questions, let me or uh, Dr. Yang uh, know, and uh, we'll be glad to help. So thank you, and we'll see you next time.